Welcome to this uh, lecture number 8 on inverse kinematics. In the last class we had looked at forward kinematics and we said that forward kinematics is uh, the process by which the input is the joint variables and the output is the position orientation of the end effector. Now the inverse of that is the inverse kinematics in which we give the input of the uh, position orientation of the end effector and the output of that is the joint variables. Now from the control point of view, it is the inverse kinematics which is more important because the robot has to position its end effector in certain uh, positions and orientations in space. Okay, And for each of those desired position orientations, the controller must know what is the corresponding joint angle. Okay, Only then it can control the joint and take the end effector to those positions. So today we will look at inverse kinematics and uh, see what, what we mean by uh, multiple solutions, what is solvability of the problem, what is a closed form solution. So let's proceed with today's class. So today we are looking at inverse kinematics uh, very quickly revising what we had do done in the last class. We had talked about the process of uh, forward and inverse kinematics. So forward kinematics, if we draw it like this, where we have, this is my forward kinematics or direct kinematics. So this is uh, uh, forward kinematics. Okay. Where the input is the thetas or the d's which are joint variables and the output is position and orientation uh, position and orientation of end effector right now the inverse of this is the input is the position or orientation of the end effector and the output is the joint angles is just the reverse of this okay so this is my inverse kinematics so i can call it inverse kinematics here Okay, so the input is the position orientation and the output of this is the, uh, the joint variables thetas or the translational uh, variable d's. So if I take a very uh, simple example here, we have a two link manipulator and a two or three link manipulator and this is my x axis, that's my y axis and there are link lengths l1, l2 like that and this is my angle theta1, theta2 and that's theta3. So we know that this position x, y, the coordinates are x, uh, y is a function of theta 1, theta 2. Okay. Now, if you write in terms of geometrical relation, then x is equal to L1 cos theta 1 plus L2 cos theta 1 plus theta 2 and y is equal to L1 sin theta 1 plus L2 sin theta 1 plus theta 2. This we saw uh, in the last class. How did we get x and y, the position of, the, of this point with reference to the base frame? So, we find the transformation matrices. 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, multiply them all out and then look at the position of the end effector. Okay. Now this uh, equation basically has uh, the, the left hand side that is the coordinates x and y, on the right hand side there is a, a cos theta and sin theta. So we can see that we have two, we have two equations here. Okay. This is one equation and this is the other equation. Okay. Now in terms of the forward kinematics, if I look in terms of the forward kinematics, then what will this be? So I'll give you theta 1, theta 2. Theta 1, theta 2. Give you means I'll give some numerical values. For example, it is 30 degrees and that is 60 degrees. Now you tell me what is x and y. So what we can do, L1 and L2 is known. So what we can do is simply put it in this equation and I'm going to get my values of x and y. That is my forward kinematics. In the inverse kinematics problem, I will say that uh, x and y have some, some value. For example, 1.366 and 1.366. Now, based on that, uh, x, y values are given like this. What is theta 1 and theta 2? This is my inverse kinematics problem. Okay. Again, we have two equations, two unknowns. But what you can see here is that uh, these are transcendental equations in the sense that there is cos and sine and they are appearing in all kinds of, uh, there is a cos theta 1 plus theta 2. Okay. So the first question that we need to ask ourselves here is the solvability, the existence of a solution. Uh, existence of a solution to this problem. Okay. Now, if the robot end effector has some degrees of freedom, it has a workspace. Of course, if the, if the end effector position orientation is outside the workspace, it cannot have a solution. 
Okay, that's that's uh, I mean just common sense. So it has to be inside the work volume. So first of all, existence of a work uh, solution is that it has to be inside uh, work volume. Okay, otherwise if it's outside, obviously the effect cannot reach. Okay, now so inside the work volume, we specify uh, or we define the work volume into dexterous workspace. Uh, workspace or we can call it reachable workspace okay so what is the meaning of dexterous workspace and reachable workspace now dexterous workspace is uh, is uh, is the are the number of points where the end effectant can reach in any orientation okay that means at this point, for example, the arm can be like this, it can be like this, it can be like this, it can be like this. So this point can be reached by the end effector in any orientation. Now those points make up what is called the dexterous workspace. Now reachable workspace is the region where the end effector can reach in at least uh, one orientation. Okay, so, so at least in one orientation. Now, what is the meaning of this? For example, I'm here, it can go like this, but it cannot go that side. It may not be able to go from this side, it may not be able to go from that side. That means this is a point near the boundary uh, where the manipulator can go in only one solution is there. It can go only like this, it cannot go in any other way. So this would be my reachable workspace, whereas this point inside here where it can go in any orientation is my dexterous workspace. Okay, so this is something we need to uh, understand that in the workspace, the end effector can go, yes, but it may be able to go in multiple ways, it may be able to go in only one way. And that divides the workspace into dexterous workspace or reachable workspace. The second point we need to note here is the uh, that there are multiple solutions. Uh, now what is the meaning of multiple solutions? Because there is this cos and sine terms involved, you, you know that they will have uh, two values always associated. What is the meaning of that? That means that if you have a manipulator like this, then the end effector is here. This is one solution. This is one value of theta 1. This is another value of theta 2. But there is another solution which is having the same value of x and y. And it will have a different, same x, y, but it will have a different theta 1, theta 2. So this is the other, other solution. Okay. So you can see that this point x, y is uh, still the same. But theta 1, this is theta 1 now. And that is theta 2 now. That is theta 2. Okay. So we have solution 1. Uh, which is the theta 1, theta 2, and we have solution 2, we can call it, so this is my solution 1, this is my solution 2, we can call it theta 1 dash and theta 2 dash, okay, and the x, y is exactly the same. So this is, means that you can have multiple solutions. Now how many solutions you will have would depend on the degrees of freedom of the system, whether you are in a singular position, whether you are a dexterous workspace, you are in reachable workspace, and this makes it more clear. So uh, this makes it you know, more clear that if you are in dexterous workspace, you would have probably more solutions. If you are in reachable workspace, you probably have lesser solutions. Okay, and if you are uh, in singular region, then you know that you are in trouble. Okay. So this is the second thing we need to look at. The third thing we need to look at is when we say that uh, it is solvable. This uh, system of equations. Now we have seen here that essentially solving the inverse kinematics problem involves solving a system of equations. So when we say solving this system of equations, uh, what does it basically mean or is this equation solvable? Okay, so we need to look at this. Now the system of equations would be solvable if all the joint variables, if all the joint uh, variables can be found. Uh, for a given position and orientation. Okay, so if all the joint variables can be found for a given position and orientation, then we say the system of uh, uh, equations is uh, solvable, right? Now, when we are talking about solvable again, there are two classes of this uh, solving the system of equations. The first is uh, closed form solution. Okay, the second is, so this is number one and that is number two, second is a numerical solution. 
Okay, so solving the process of solving for finding all the joint variables of, from the system of equations uh, uh, can be divided into two groups. One is form solutions, where you can find uh, basically the solutions that are obtained by algebraic methods, algebraic or geometric methods. Okay, uh, method is used. So when you're trying to solve that system of equations to get all the variables, you're using algebraic method or a geometric method, and these solutions are called closed form solutions. Now, numerical solutions are those which are approximate solutions. Okay, so these are approximate solutions. Uh, now, in robotics, approximate solutions are not used. So when we say solvable and we are doing inverse kinematics and we're finding a solution, we basically mean closed form solutions. We do not mean numerical solutions. Okay, so please keep that in mind. Now, if you are wondering why numerical solutions are not used, essentially because of the error involved. Okay, so uh, even if you say that the error is very small, for example, your error is 0 0.001 okay, degrees, that much, that small error. But then a robot is going to perform a task a very large number of times. For example, 10 days to 100 times, robot will uh, perform a task. So if you multiply this, what you'll get is a very large number. So you'll get a very large error. Okay. So the error in one application or one uh, inverse kinematics solution could be small for one trajectory maybe, okay, or to reach one point. But the, uh, the moment you perform that multiple number of times, what would happen is the error will start building now. And the robot is not going to do it once or twice, it will do it in, for a very large number of times, because of which this numerical solutions are not preferred. The other is, if it is approximate solution, it can be dangerous. Why is it dangerous? Because the robot is moving around. Okay, so even if there is a very small uh, error, what can happen is it can go and hit something, or there can be an accident, which is not uh, allowed in robotics. Okay, and it is uh, extremely dangerous, and manufacturer must ensure that that does not happen. So let's move on to our. We were talking about uh, the solution process. Now let's look at this particular case and understand how do we formulate the inverse kinematics problem. So this is a two-link manipulator, sorry, three-link manipulator, okay, and we have L1, this is my theta1, theta2, and theta3, and we have our, uh, my z coordinates, z0, z1, this is my z2 as per dh parameter, this is my z3, this is x1, x, sorry, x0, x1, x2, and x3. And these are link lengths L1, L2. Okay. Now I have done this uh, quite a few times in the last couple of classes. So I'll just write down the final equation. What we find is what we need to do is to write a dh parameter table. So next time it my dh table a alpha d and theta. So from the dh table we get 0, 0, 0, theta 1, then we get we get 0, sorry, it's L1, 0, 0, theta 2. And then we get L3, 0, 0, theta 3, right? This is our dh parameter table. Now I find T0 to 3 by multiplying all the matrices T0 to 1 into T1 to 2 into T2 to 3, right? And this matrix T0 to 3 comes out to be uh, of this form. So let me write it here. This is equal to cos 1, 2, 3 minus sine 1, 2, 3. This is sine 1, 2, 3, cos 1, 2, 3, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. Here it's L1 cos 1 plus L2 cos 1, 2. And here it is L1 sin 1 plus L2 sin 1, 2. This is, uh, this is 0, this is 0, 0, 0, 1. Now, please refer to the last uh, few classes where I have actually derived this. Now, uh, this, this contains the position and the orientation of the end effector. Now, what is the desired position and orientation of the end effector? Suppose I give my desired uh, position and orientation of the end effector. Now the the orientation is a matrix, so I say it is cos phi minus sine phi sine phi cos phi 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. These are all numerical values. I'll just come to when I come to an example, you'll under x y this is zero, that is one. Okay, I'll come to an example. When you get an, uh, when you get an idea that what how do we solve the actual problem? So here what we are doing is 
this is my desired position orientation this is my orientation matrix and that's my position vector right now what i need to do is i need to equate this one with this n prime so so see, this is uh, 0 l1 c1 l2 c12 okay, then we have uh, sine 1 2 3 cos 1 2 3 0 1 0 0 0 0 0 and here we have l1 sine 1 plus l2 sine 1 2 0 that is 1 right so this is my desired and this is what i have got from t0 to 3 okay now we need to equate term by term and solve now if you look at uh, if you try and look at the term to term what we can see is that there are actually four equations only although this is a 4 by 4 matrix and there are not 16 equations okay so this is one equation cos of this is equal to that and the other equation is this is equal to that okay and uh, so this is my equation number one equation number two equation number three will come equating this to this and equation number four is equating this to this okay so we have four equations so we basically have uh, four equations how many variables the three variables which are unknown is theta one theta two theta three so let me write down the four equations so the four equations are uh, cos cos phi cos phi is equal to cos 1 2 3 and sine phi is equal to sine 1 2 3 means sine theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3 okay that's what it means then uh, the other two x is equal to l1 cos 1 plus l2 cos 1 2 and y is equal to l1 sine 1 plus l2 sine 1 2 so we have four equations so we have four equations here and we have four unknowns uh, sorry, we have three unknowns. Okay, what are the unknowns? Theta 1, theta 2, and theta 3. Okay, and we have four equations. But if you look at how these equations are, you can see that it is cos theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3. So this is very difficult to solve like this. Okay, so what we do is instead of trying to solve, when we try to solve, we try and target this equation and this equation. Okay, so if I go back to this matrix, uh, first of all, this is a 4 by 4 matrix. So on the left side, we have 16 terms and the light again, you have 16 elements, but there are not 16 equations. So if you look very carefully, there are only four equations actually. Now, when we start trying to solve, what we do is we equate this term with this term and this term with this term. Okay. And uh, we end up with four equations like this. And these are two equations. Let's call this, this is my equation one equation 2, equation 3, and equation 4. Okay, We start off by looking at equation 3 and 4. And uh, why we start from there is because when you have cos theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3, there's no way of solving that. Whereas here we see there is a sine and there is a cos. So we can make use of sine squared plus cos squared is equal to 1 and then hope that we can uh, eliminate one of the variables. Okay, So these two equations, Let's uh, let me write it again. X is equal to L1 cos 1 plus L2 cos 1 2. Okay, and Y is equal to L1 sine 1 plus L2 sine 1 2. Now here there are two variables theta 1 and theta 2. Theta 3 is not there. So this is my equation 1 and this is my equation 2. So squaring and adding. Okay, what do we get is X squared plus Y squared is equal to L1 squared cos 1 squared plus L2 squared cos 1 2 squared plus uh, twice L1 L2 cos 1 cos 1 2 plus L1 squared S1 squared plus L2 squared S1 2 squared plus twice L1 L2 S1 S1 2. Okay. Now what we can do is we can take uh, the uh, L1 common L1 squared common and L2 squared common. So there is a cos one squared plus sine one squared, okay, that which is equal to one. So what I'm going to class, I'm going to simplify this by saying this is L one squared. There is a cos one squared plus sine one squared plus L two squared. There is a cos one two squared plus sine one two squared, okay, plus twice L one L two, okay, cos one cos one two, okay, plus uh, sine one sine one two, okay. So what we are getting is I am taking some terms common and this will become equal to 1, this will become equal to 1, this will, this we can simplify. So x squared plus y squared 
is equal to L1 squared plus L2 squared plus twice twice L1 L2 okay, and this is equal to cross this is equal to cross 1 2 minus 1 you can write it like this okay so what happens here this 1 and 1 will cancel okay theta 1 theta 1 will cancel and what we are left with is x squared plus y squared is equal to L1 squared plus L2 squared plus twice L1 L2 cross 2 please note this one this is coming from here okay so now what we can do is I can say cos 2 is equal to x squared plus y squared minus L1 squared minus L2 squared divided by twice L1 L2 right now here's something to note is that we should not take a cos inverse okay to get theta 2 we should not take a cos inverse so do not take cos inverse is not to be taken why because we have two solutions now you will not know which solution corresponds to which one so we have positive solution we have a negative solution so for a computer program to find that out is extremely difficult okay so what we do is from cos 2 we find sine 2 which is equal to root 1 minus cos 2 squared then we use the special function called theta 2 is equal to a tan 2 okay sine 2 cos 2 now this is a special function a tan 2 so it takes the positive value of sine and the positive value of cos and it finds the value of uh, theta 2 okay so please note here that do not take the inverse of cos 2 find sine 2 and then come to a tan 2 function to find the value of theta 2 so we have found the value of theta 2 now we need to find the value of theta 1 now how do you find the value of theta 1 what we do is uh, uh, we can find it from geometry or we can find by uh, trigonometry also okay so let us uh, look at this geometrical solution okay so this is a geometrical solution where we have uh, let me draw it so this is my okay this is my l1 this is my l2 and this is my x-axis that's my y-axis okay now this point is xy okay so i'm not drawing this there is one more link here okay but this point is xy so what i'm doing is uh, this is my angle theta one this is my angle theta two and we have obtained theta two so what we are do doing now is that i'm making this construction like this okay so i'm just making this triangle like this and i'm completing this triangle like this okay so that's the construction i have made now let me call this angle you know, alpha and let me call this angle the small one beta okay so what is theta 1 equal to theta 1 in this geometrical figure is equal to alpha minus beta okay that is the geometrically so we know what is theta 2 I want to find what is theta 1 okay so what we do is I find what is tan what is tan beta tan of beta is equal to y is equal to y by x okay so that we can get now uh, what is sorry tan of beta is not y by x tan of alpha is y by x sorry that is this step. so tan of alpha is equal to y by x okay yeah so y by x is equal to tan of alpha now what is tan beta tan beta is equal to uh, this distance okay, this distance so tan beta is equal to this distance by this uh, this full distance so which is equal to uh, what is this l2 l2 sine theta 2 l2 sine 2 okay, divided by l1 divided by l1 plus l1 plus l2 l2 cos 2 okay so from this triangle so this triangle what we are seeing is that uh, tan of beta is equal to uh, on the top it is this much which is equal to l2 sine 2 and at the, on the base it is l1 plus l2 cos 2 okay so we have tan alpha and we have tan beta so now there is a formula tan alpha plus beta sorry tan alpha minus beta So tan alpha minus beta is equal to tan alpha plus tan beta 
sorry, it is 1 tan alpha minus tan beta, 1 plus tan alpha tan beta. Okay. So now we know the values of tan alpha and tan beta. I can put in this formula and get what is tan alpha plus beta. So what is tan alpha plus beta? Tan alpha plus, uh, sorry, tan alpha minus beta. So tan alpha minus beta is equal to theta 1. So I can get the value of theta 1 and then I can take inverse of tan and, and uh, that is my theta 1 is equal to tan inverse. Okay. So geometrically we were able to find what is the uh, solution for this okay? uh, once we get theta 2. So once we get theta 2, we can find what is theta 1 and then uh, we have the solution for theta 1 and theta 2. This is how we do inverse kinematics. Let us look at uh, a problem where we are trying to uh, trying to solve by giving numerical uh, numerical values. Okay, so in order to explain this better, let's look at numerical solution now. Okay, so let us look at a numerical solution. Okay, sorry. Before I uh, before I go there, so we have found theta one and theta two. Now we go back to the previous equation. Okay, so how many variables were there? So cos phi is equal to cos 1, 2, 3, which is equal to cos theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3. Okay, so we have found theta 1, theta 2. What you need to do is to find theta 3 now. Okay, so now you can, when you know these two, you know this, so you can find that. Okay, so uh, now we can find either from once you have found theta 1, theta 2, you can use this equation or you can use that equation and then find the corresponding value. Okay. So let's look at a numerical solution now, which will tell us uh, and explain this in a little bit more detail. Then it will become very clear how it works. So the numerical solution, find the numerical solution. So find uh, the inverse kinematic solution uh, for this manipulator, which is shown here, the same one. Okay. Okay. So this is a three link manipulator L1, L2. This is theta 1, theta 2, theta 3. Okay. Find the inverse kinematic solution uh, for the 3 DOF arm shown. Okay. Now, uh, given the position and orientation matrix and orientation. Uh, as so we are given the position orientation matrix as so this is my position orientation matrix so what is the uh, 0, 0, 0, 1 okay what is the position it's 1.366 let's say 1.366 so just for example so my x and y coordinates uh, of this point is given there 1.366 1.366 okay now what about the the rotation matrix the rotation is uh, cos minus sine sine cos so cos is equal to minus 0 0.5 and uh, minus sine is equal to minus 0 0.866 okay cos uh, minus sine sine so this is 0 0.866 and that is uh, 0. Point, minus 0 0.5 This cos sine sine cos. Okay, yeah. So these are the numbers. Okay, so now I hope it is clear that zero. No. This is my full matrix, okay. This is my full matrix, okay. So, this is the desired position and orientation of the end effector that I want. Now, how do we solve this? So, this is the desired position, okay. This is the desired orientation of the matrix. Now, uh, what we do is the procedure is number one put dh parameters, assign dh uh, parameters. Okay. Then find number two is find 
matrix T0 to 3. How do you find that? You find the individual matrices 1 to 2, 0 to, sorry, 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3. Multiply them out, you get this matrix. Then you take the desired orientation and position matrix and equate this to T0 to 3. Okay. So if you equate that, what will we get is minus 0 0.5. Now I have solved this problem, so you know what is the T0 to 3. Okay, so T0 to 3 is this matrix. Okay, so T0 to 3 is given here. This is my T0 to 3. And I derived it in the last couple of classes. Okay, so you take this matrix and equate it to the position and, or and orientation of the end effector that is desired. So we get minus 0 0.5 minus 0 0.866. This is 0 0.866 minus 0 0.5. This is 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. Is 0, 0, 0, and here it is 1.366, 1.366, it is 0, it is 1, which is equal to uh, my matrix. What was the matrix? Cos 1, 2, 3, minus sine 1, 2, 3, sine 1, 2, 3, cos 1, 2, 3, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, this is 0, 0, 0, this is L1 cos 1 plus L2 cos 1, 2, this is L1 sine 1 plus L2 sine 1, 2, this is uh, 0, that is 1. Okay, so what we are getting is now we have our four equations. What are the four equations? The four equations which we got. Uh, so we are equate. Let, let me go back here. So what are the terms we are equating? We are equating this one. We are equating this one to this one. Then we are equating this one to this one. Then I'm equating this to that. I'm equating that to that. I have four uh, four equations. Right. So let me write down these four equations as uh, cos uh, phi. So cos phi was equal to how much? So cos phi was equal to minus 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5 is equal to uh, cos 1, 2, 3. Okay, that was one equation. What is the other equation? The 0 0.866. Sorry, yeah. It is uh, 0 0.866 is equal to sine 1, 2, 3. This is one equation. What is the other one? 1.366 is equal to L1 cos 1 plus L2 cos 1, 2. And 1.366 is equal to L1 sine 1 plus L2 sine 1, 2. Okay, so we have four equations. Now L1, L2 is of course given. Okay, so L1, L2, just for simplicity, let's say L1 is equal to L2 is equal to 1. Okay, so link lengths are 1. So we can solve it now. Uh, how do we solve? So first we know we can find theta 2. Okay, so cos 2 is equal to x squared plus y squared. So theta 2 uh, cos theta 2 which is uh, cos 2 is equal to x squared plus y squared. Okay. So what was the formula we were using? x squared plus y squared minus uh, L1 squared minus L2 squared divided by twice L1 L2. Okay. This is the formula we used. And if you do that, if you put in the values, what we are getting is 2 times 1.366 squared minus 2 okay, divided by 2 times uh, 1 into 1. So I can cancel all the 2s. Okay. And what we do get is, is equal to 1.366 squared minus 1, okay, which is equal to 0 0.865. Okay. So you can just compute it and you will get this value. Okay. So this is my cos 2. So now what we want is uh, sine 2. So if you want sine 2 now, sine 2 is equal to root over 1 minus cos 2 squared, which is equal to root over 1 minus uh, 0 0.865 squared. And if we do that, what we get is, uh, we can get let's see, root over 0.25. Okay. Okay. Now, what we get from here, sine 2, sine 2 is equal to 0 0.50. Okay. Now, uh, from here, we find a tan 2. So, theta 2 is equal to a tan 2, which is equal to uh, a tan 2 of sine 2 cos 2. So, it is 0 0.5 and what is the value of cos, which is equal to 0 0.865. Okay. So what we are getting is uh, a tan 2 is equal to a 
equal to 30 degrees. So if you do that, you get it is equal to 30 degrees. Sorry, 30 degrees. Okay, put in the numbers and it's just a question of computing. It is 30.1 actually. So this small numerical uh, point is there. So what we have done is we have simply used the formula and we have got theta 2. So theta 2 is equal to this value. Now once you have got theta 2, okay, once you have got theta 2, uh, you can find what is theta 1. Okay, so theta 2 you have got. Now find uh, uh, theta 1. That we have seen how to find geometrically. Okay, so geometrically you can find theta 1. Okay, so this is uh, the standard procedure of doing inverse kinematics. So first find the uh, given position orientation, given position plus orientation, okay. Then you equate with desired, sorry, you get uh, the given position orientation or desired position orientation matrix, okay. Equate it with the 0 to nth matrix, then try and solve uh, from one point to another point, okay. Try and solve the equations. Now, uh, let us look at one more example before we uh, move on to more complicated systems. Now, let us look at this example of uh, the SCARA manipulator, which we had done in the last class. Okay, so this was our SCARA robot, which we had solved in the last class. Again, go back, I'll, I'll do, I'll write the equations only. So go back to the last lecture, so that uh, how do we find the final matrix. So this is my SCARA manipulator. Okay, so it has two links like this, third link is there, and then we have a fourth joint there. So this is a four degree of freedom SCARA, SCARA 4 DF arm. So it has uh, two revolute joints, sorry, three revolute joints and one prismatic joint. So three are 1P. Okay. Now, uh, we are given the desired position and orientation of this uh, end effector. Okay, so we are given the desired position and orientation. So what is the meaning of this given desired position and orientation? We are given some numbers. Okay, so we'll be given some numbers uh, in terms of, for example, I can say again 1.366, 1.366. Okay, and then 0, 01. This is 0, 0, 0. And here, uh, let me say the numbers are zero point five, zero point five, zero point eight six, zero zero. This is zero zero one. Okay. So this is desired position and orientation of the end effector. Okay. So given desired uh, position and orientation. Of end effector. This is equal to let's say two. Okay, so when we are given the desired position orientation of the end effector. Okay. Now, uh, how do we proceed? Let us follow exactly the same procedure that we were following in the uh, last example. So we have to put our dh parameters. Let's put our dh parameters z0, z1, z2, z3 is there and z4 is here. Okay, x, x0, x1, x2, there is my x3 and x4 is here. Okay, now this is a prismatic joint. So it is going to move up and down by d distance d. These are revolute joints. So this is theta one, theta two, and there is a theta, a theta four there. Okay. Now let us say the distance from here to here is l two. Okay, this is a fixed distance. Now in the SCARA robot, there is one translating joint, which is this joint, which is going to move up and down. So which means that this link number, this link, okay, can move up and down. So the origin of the frame three is going to go up and down with reference to origin uh, with the uh, frame 2, okay. Now, how do we proceed? 
Now we proceed exactly in the same way that uh, we were doing for the uh, the other. So exactly in the same way that we were uh, proceeding, let us uh, proceed. So please make this correction here. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, Okay, so let us proceed by making our dh parameter table, dh table. So making our dh table, we have a alpha, a alpha, d and theta. And what we do get is uh, our link lengths 0, 0, 0, 0, theta 1, then it is L1, 0, 0, theta 2. The second one is L2, 0, 0, sorry, this one is at d3, d there. Okay, so that's my d3 and that is 0. And the fourth one has uh, has a zero here. It has an alpha of 180 degrees, and we have a uh, this d, which is l l2 here. Let's call it, okay l2, and this is my theta four. Okay, this is my dh parameter table. I had done this in the last class, so please have a look at this uh, before to understand uh, how do we get the final matrix t zero to four. Okay, so from this DH parameter table, we find each of the individual matrices and then we get this matrix by multiplying. So 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4. Okay, now uh, this is my desired position and orientation, right? So now what we are doing is my T 0 to 4 matrix comes out to be, I had derived it in the last class, so please have a look. It comes out to be cos uh, 1 to minus 4. Then this is sine uh, 1 to minus 4. This means sine of theta 1 plus theta 2 minus theta 4. This is sine 1 to minus 4. And this is minus cos 1 to minus 4. Okay. Here it is 0, 0, minus 1. And this is my 0, 0. And what about here? It comes out to be L1 cos 1 plus L2 cos 1 2 and here it is l1 sin 1 plus l2 sin 1 2 this is uh, this is equal to minus l2 plus d3 okay this is 0 0 0 1 okay so please refer to the last few classes in which i derive the final matrix for the scara robot and it comes out to be like this after writing each of the indi independent uh, matrices now uh, what we have to do is we have to now equate Okay, that means uh, what was the desired orientation? What was the desired? Uh, what is the desired position and orientation? So the desired position and orientation is equated to this is equated to uh, 0 0.86, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and minus 0 0.86, 0 0 minus 1. Let's say 0 0.866, 0 0. This is 0, 0, 0, and that fellow is uh, 1.366. 1.366. This is uh, this was equal to 2, and that is equal to 1. Okay, I hope I got it right. Uh, let me just check it once. 0.86 plus minus. Okay, yeah. Now let's look at this matrix here and try to understand with relation to the manipulator here now. Okay, this is my rotation matrix. Okay, this is the rotation part. Okay, this part is rotation okay this part is the position and this is the orientation now if you look at the rotation matrix the last z4 is inversed is reversed compared to z0 so there's a minus one there okay so z0 is in this direction whereas z4 is in this direction okay and that is shown by this minus one here now the rotations are all about z axis so this is basically 0.86 is uh, basically coming out this way only. Okay, so if when we type uh, when we are writing our equations, what will this come out to be? 0 0.86 is equal to cos. Okay, let me write it cos theta one plus theta two minus theta four. What about uh, this term? This will be 0 0.5 is equal to sine. 1 plus 2 minus 4. Something to note here is that we have uh, 
two equations here, we have another two here, so which we get one, one is from here, one is from here, but there is a z coordinate also here. This one is my z coordinate. So the z coordinate which is shown as 2 is a sum of d plus l2, but they are in different directions. So when we go back here uh, in this, we get that this is equal, this term x is equal to x, this y of here is equal to y of that, but there is a z also and the z is equal to this. Okay, so we actually have five equations now. Two, one equation is this, okay, equated to this, that's my first equation. Second equation is this, equated to this. Third equation is this, equated to that. Fourth equation is that, equated to that, and fifth one is here, because there is a z here now. Now, if you try and solve, uh, we have five equations. Okay, now how do we solve? Now, we can try to solve by looking at which one does not have a theta. So, one very interesting point in uh, manipulators is if an equation does not have theta 1, theta 2 or any uh, thetas, then you can try and solve it uh, easily because sine and cos is not there. So, if I equate this one, okay, this with this, I will get one straight solution. Okay. So, what is the straight solution? Minus L2 plus D3 is equal to 2, which implies uh, if I make the assumption that L1 is equal to L2 is equal to L3, so given these are given blink lengths, right? So these are given. So if they are equal to 1, then I can simply say that Z D3 is equal to 2 plus 1 is equal to 3. Okay, so this is our first solution. So how many variables are here? I have theta 1, theta 2, uh, D, uh, D3, the, uh, the variable D. Did we call it D3? What was the variable? Oh, it was called D. Variable D and the variable theta 4. So I have four unknowns and I have five equations 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay. So the first one we get by equating minus L2 and D3 to be equal to uh, 2 equal to 2, and we get our solution as D3 is equal to sorry, I didn't call it D3. D is equal to 3. Okay. Uh, leak length L1, L2, L3 is equal to 1. Now, uh, uh, wh what are the next two we can catch? So, the next two equations which we can try to solve is uh, this one, this one and this one. So, I equate this to this. This we had done already before. So, the next solution we can do is uh, we equate 1.366 is equal to L1 uh, cos 1 plus L2 cos 1, 2 and 1.366 is equal to L1 sine 1 plus L2 sine 1, 2. Okay. Now, we know how to solve this. We just solved this some time back and the solution we got for theta 2 was equal to, just some time back we solved it and we got the solution of uh, theta 2. Okay. So, theta 2 was equal to 30 degrees. Okay. Now, once you get theta 2, you can find what is theta 1. Okay. So, you can uh, solve for theta 1 next, right? So, theta 1, if you solve, you also get this is also 30 degrees. This is also 30 degrees, okay? Uh, from geometry, we can solve. Now, once theta 2 is solved, theta 1 is solved, okay? So, what is remaining is theta 4, okay? So, how can you find theta 4? So, theta 4 is essentially can be obtained from uh, equating this, this to uh, this to this. Okay, so cos of so cos of one plus two minus four is equal to uh, zero point eight six. Okay, so what we got here is uh, it is equal to zero point eight six six. Okay, so what we can do is we can take the inverse of cos. Okay, so we have theta one plus theta two. So, we can take theta 1 is 30 plus this is 30 degrees plus this is theta 4 is equal to cos inverse of 0 0.866. Okay. So, from that, whatever is the number you get, you can find what is theta 4. Okay. So, this is how we can find the four variables theta 1, theta 2, d, and theta 4. Okay. So, this is how we do inverse kinematics of a manipulator like a 2 degree of freedom arm. Or in the case of a scalar robot, it was a uh, 4 degree of freedom okay, where we had a prismatic joint also. So, it is very interesting to note uh, that 
you need to correlate the degrees of freedom on the arm to that of the actual manipulator. Okay, and then in the final solution, we can see that in this particular case, we had four variables theta 1, theta 2, d, and theta 4. Okay, and in terms of equations, we had five equations. And then which one we are going to target first has to be observed. So there is no automatic procedure that it has to be done like this only. Okay, there's something to note. Some it, some manipulators have solutions, some manipulators may not have solution. If you're not able to solve, too bad. Okay. So in this particular case, you have to intelligently choose a solution such that you are able to solve the equation. Here we saw that if you target this one and you target this one, you get that D, D3 because there is no sign cause there. Then you know you can target this, 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 and this and that. Okay. Then last of all, you target that one. Okay, this is how we solve. So there is no standard procedure by saying that uh, for all manipulators this will work. So you have to observe very carefully and then try and solve. So this gives us a good idea of uh, how to solve inverse kinematics. The procedure is the same. Uh, assign DH parameters. Okay, then uh, after assigning DH parameters, so the procedure is assign DH parameters. After assigning DH parameters, make the DH parameter table. Then find the transformation matrix from one from the end effector to the base coordinate system. Then equate that matrix to that of the desired position and orientation that is required. And uh, then try and see, you will get how many equations are there, how many variables are there. And then in those equations, try to see that which equations do not contain sine and cos. If they do not contain sine and cos, then that's a hint that you can try, sol try solving from there. Now we'll see for larger manipulators like the Puma 6 degree of freedom manipulator that when we are doing the inverse kinematics, it has when we are doing the when we are multiplying the transformation matrices, okay, uh, from the end effector to the base frame, we have to multiply it in such a way that you end up with terms where you do not get sign and cos terms, and then you can start solving from there. Otherwise, for large manipulators, it becomes very very difficult to solve. So today we will uh, stop here and then continue in the next class on how to solve inverse kinematics for larger manipulators like the Puma robot arm. So we'll stop here today. So thank you.